Praise the Lord, everybody. Who's excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Can we stand tonight? Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. I'm so thankful sometimes to come in here and just be able to let go. You know, there's times where things come up in our lives and we just like to ball it up. Anybody like that? Any ball up, anybody ball up their feelings? Anybody like that? I know I am. I'll be the first to admit it. But God, when you come into this place and you're able to just raise your hands and lift your voice and be able to magnify the name of Jesus, who came ready to magnify his name tonight? Why don't we lift our hands, begin to raise our voice and give him praise for who he is and what he's going to do in this service. We're going to take everything in our minds and our hearts out of the way, and we're going to focus on the one who is more than able, who can do exceedingly, who can do abundantly, above all that we can even ask or even think. Lord God, we are here for you and you alone. There is no one higher. There is no one greater than you. You sit upon the throne, and we are here to worship the name of Jesus. And if you believe that tonight, why don't you give him a shout of praise and a hand clap of praise tonight. And we are going to worship the King of kings and Lord of lords. Worship with us tonight as we sing. Praise him. Oh, I've got, I, I've got to praise. praise. 
I like that reminder. It says it's time to praise him. Sometimes we can get a little distracted, a little worn out and tired, but I, I like that reminder. Now's the time to praise him. It doesn't matter what's going on in our life. It's time to praise the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're able to stand at this time, we ask that you would do so. We do want to go before the Lord in, in prayer this evening. Several needs. Uh, Sister Crystal, I believe it's the aunt of Brother Paul Graf. Uh, Betty is having emergency surgery. Uh, is in critical care. Maybe she already had it in critical care in the ICU. We want to remember uh, Betty tonight. Brother Bernie is having some health issues and I think he was struggling to get into the doctor. So we pray that either those issues would be resolved or a spot would open up for Brother Bernie. Amen. Also, remember the family of Chelsea Line. Her great uncle Bill passed away. Uh, we pray that the Lord would be with that family and Brother Jones, who's dealing with uh, an open wound right now. We want the Lord to, to heal him. Every special, unspoken, signified, so many needs. Let's go to a God who's able tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for being in this place, Lord. Thank you for hearing us every time we cry out to you. I pray, Lord, that every need which is brought before your throne tonight would be brought with boldness and faith, believing, God, that you're able to do all things, Lord, every situation. Lord, whether somebody needs hope or healing, whatever the need may be, I pray that your miracle working power would be dispatched right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you in advance for all that you've done, all that you're going to do. And I pray that this moment right now would be the beginning of a mighty testimony for your glory in Jesus' name. If you believe that tonight, would you give the Lord one more hand clap of praise? Amen, amen, amen. You can be seated in Jesus' name if our ushers would make their way. Uh, we do want to remind you, uh, the Golden Pillars have an outing, I believe, tomorrow uh, for the Butterfly Conservatory. There is a sign-up in the vestibule for that if you want to talk with Brother or Sister Blackford. It's 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock for that event. Also, uh, remember, we do have our Mother's Day service, a uh, very special service next week. We'll be celebrating our mothers and sister Barkus uh, will be there for our one service next week at 10 a.m. So uh, invite somebody that you think would enjoy that service as well. Also today is Mission Sunday, so please remember that in your giving. Let's ask the Lord to bless this offering. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to give to your kingdom. We pray that you would bless it and multiply it and help it to reach this lost world. In Jesus' name we pray and everyone said amen.
will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory is I will dance out in pain. I will crush this and break every chain. All of my fear I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. a shout of praise for the God who can do all things. Shake at the sound of Jesus' name. 
across the place every hand lifted I believe oh if you believe it you oh it is done oh what you say possible. Amen. He's God. Amen. He holds all power and all authority over all things. Just by the very mentioning of His name, we serve a mighty God. Let's give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, praise team, worship team, for that worship. Thank you for your response. Amen. For all our visitors, welcome. Thank you for coming and joining on behalf of Pastor and his wife. Pastor's out. If you do not know, he's had knee surgery. He was here this morning. If you're a visitor, we welcome you to please come back. Amen. Uh, we want the Lord to continue to heal him, give him a complete recovery. Matter of fact, every name we've lifted up, every situation, every special and spoken, I'm believing God for a complete healing and recovery. Amen. That's the God we serve. Amen. God is so good. Another reminder, next week is Mother's Day. Men, better get hot. Better get hot. Don't wait till Saturday. Amen. Me and my wife was talking about that. It's always busy and crowded somewhere on, on Saturday before Mother's Day. Amen. But men, we have one service on Sunday. Amen. We'll have Sister Barkas here. It'll be a tremendous time in the Holy Ghost. We just want the Lord to move and to minister. Amen. We had two get the Holy Ghost this morning, one baptized. Amen. God is moving. Amen. We are a revival church. Amen. Appreciate Brother Bobby's message. Amen. The 28th, the 28th of May, mark your calendars. Amen. It is Pentecostal Sunday. Amen. It is Pentecostal Sunday. I understand that's Memorial Weekend. Amen. But we just want to have a Holy Ghost crusade. Amen. Invite somebody. Amen. Invite them to every service. But if we can get them there on Pentecostal Sunday, the birth of the church, we're going to celebrate the birth of the church, that upper room where God breathed and set upon them as a fire. Amen. Fill that whole place. The 28th Pentecostal Sunday, invite somebody. Invite your neighbor, your friends, your cousins, whoever. Somebody you know that needs the Lord, invite them. Invite them on, on Wednesday and next Sunday as well. Amen. We get them. We get them here. Amen. God will move. Amen. God will move. Amen. You keep being that witness. Amen. But Psalm 73, verses 1 and 2, and verse 28. Amen. God is so good. Amen. I say that a lot. Amen. And I'm about to explain to you why I say that a lot. Amen. God is so good. Amen. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Ain't nobody can, ain't nothing like Jesus. Ain't nothing like this relationship. Amen. I apologize in advance. I'm used to being here on the morning, so I may throw morning out here a few times instead of evening. Amen. But it's always a new day in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Psalm 73 and 1 in the Lord, where the Lord says this, Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. And then in verse 28, he says, But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all thy works. Amen. God is good. God is good. He's good not just to Israel. He's good to all of his children. Amen. That's my subject tonight. God is good. Amen. If you'll put down your Bibles, we'll just ask the Lord to bless this word. Lord, we love you and we praise you. We thank you, Lord, for a heart and a mind to be here, Lord. Help us to be sensitive to your spirit, Lord. Help us to be in tune to you, Lord. Open up our hearts and our minds, Lord, that we can leave here different than what we came, Lord. Draw near to you, Lord Jesus. Just being in your presence, Lord, we're changed, Lord. We thank you for your presence here, Lord. We thank you for the liberty we feel, Lord, in this place, Lord. Lord, above, above all, Lord, as always, let us just not be hearers of your word, Lord, but let us be doers of your word. Let us apply this word to our life, Lord. Let's just not let it lie dormant, Lord. Let's be active, Lord. Let your spirit move within us, Lord, and lead us and guide us, Lord, in all that we do, Lord. Help us to decrease that you can increase. And in Jesus' name we pray, and let everybody say amen. 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 Smile at your neighbors. You're being seated. Amen. God is good. Amen. And all the time, God is good. Amen. We know that. We know that. We know that is true. God is good. 
That is the truth that does not change. Amen. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His word is forever settled. He doesn't change. Amen. He cannot be nothing but good. Amen. Circumstances doesn't change that. Culture doesn't change that. Science does not change that. Philosophy can't change that. The government can't even legislate it to change it. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. That is the foundational truth. Amen. It is one that we will accept at face value. As a matter of fact, we would get offended if someone argued otherwise. We would get stirred up in our righteous indignation because this is a truth that is not open for debate. Amen. No matter what anybody says, no matter what anybody does, no matter what is going on around us, God is good. God is good. That is settled. Amen. The thing I'm wondering about tonight is not whether or not you know it. I believe you know it. God is good. My question is this, and we've been singing about it. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Amen. Think about it for a minute. It is one thing to, to know a thing, to check the mental box. Yep, God is good. I know God is good. The Bible told me so. The preacher tells me so. Amen. My mama told me so. Amen. I've got the head knowledge. It's as, it's as settled as two plus two is four. As the sun is rising in the east, amen, God is good. But it's another thing entirely to really believe it. Amen. To believe it is what our heart, with all our heart and our being, to embrace a conscious conviction. I don't know just, I don't know how, I don't know that he is good. I believe he is good. Amen. I've experienced this for myself. Amen. You can argue the point all day. I come and taste it. I've tasted and seen that God is good. He said, come and dine. You want to argue the point? You come taste it. You find out for yourself. I've experienced too much in my short time with God. I've seen too many miracles. He's seen too many people healed. I've faced too much debt and everything for God to bring me out to understand that God is good. Amen. He's always on time. He's always delivered. He's always been a provider. I know I've been persuaded because I've had that relationship with Him. I've talked with Him and walked with Him and He's delivered every time. God is good. And He's always on time. Amen. Circumstances might change what I know, but what I believe is not contingent upon circumstances. What I believe rises from my faith. And what I've experienced and tasted in God. Amen. What he's brought me through and where he's taken me. Amen. Faith is not about what I see. Amen. Faith is not what I feel. Faith is not about the empirical evidence. Amen. Faith is more about what my heart knows. Amen. What my spirit knows. Amen. What my innermost man knows. My head knowledge is always evolving. I'm constantly learning new things. What I know today may change tomorrow, but my faith, amen, while it grows, it does not change because God continues to get better and better and better in every situation. Amen. He's always taken me to new heights. He's always taken us as a church to new heights and to new depths if we'll just submit and surrender. Amen. And trust Him. Amen. I believe God is good and nothing else will ever change that. Amen. We can take it out back. We can bust knuckles, whatever we got to do. You'll never convince me anything different than God is good. Amen. You can't show me any evidence otherwise. You can try to disprove it all you want, but I have experienced something. Amen. I've experienced something. You've experienced something. And I'm forever settled on that word. I'm forever rooted and grounded upon the truth of him. I believe in this Acts 2.38 message with everything that I got. I believe in the five-fold ministry. I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. I believe the rapture's coming. Amen. And it's settled. It is the word of God because God is good. Amen. We trust him. In my present circumstance, God is good. No matter what is going on, God is good. No matter what is happening, God is good. 
no matter what the doctor says, no matter what that report says, God is still good. Amen. He's still a provider. He's still a healer. Amen. Whatever the lawyer says, God is good. Whatever the banker says, God is good. Whatever my boss says at work, God is still good. Amen. There may be a subtle difference between knowing and believing, but it is an important distinction. Because what you know can be challenged, but what you believe does not rely on evidence. If I know God is good, God is good. Amen. The evidence might possibly change my convictions, but if I believe it, all the evidence in the world will never shake my faith and my trust to believe in Him. Amen. You got to take this by faith, folks. You got to believe it in your heart. God is good. This is important because it affects everything. Amen. It affects everything. It affects our outlook on life. It affects our perspective on the things that happens in your life. Amen. It affects your attitude. Amen. Do I trust Him to carry me through the victories? Amen. Do I trust Him when I'm having the hard times? God is good. Amen. It affects my perspective on the things that have happened in my life. It is the good times and in the bad times. Amen. It's knowing that He's going to carry me through them. Amen. Trust in Him, knowing that He's already carried me through one thing. Lord, I've been here before. I've faced this trial. I've been through this situation. I've been in hard times. But Lord, I know You're going to carry me through. It's Your love, Your grace, and Your mercy that continues to see me through. Amen. It affects your witness to the lost. Do they see you, amen, trusting God or do they see you not trusting God? Do they see you praising Him or do they see you beating Him down? Why do I have to go through this? Why does this situation come my way? Trusting God. God is good. He'll see you through the end. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Amen. Once He carries you through that first trial, amen, it just gets better and better after that. The trials may get harder. Amen. But God just gets better and better through it all. Amen. And He care, He finds new ways. Amen. To see you through. It affects everything in our Christian life. Amen. Knowing that God is good. Psalm 63 and 3 says, Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Amen. The psalmist said, His goodness is better than life. Now that's a big statement. Amen. But whatever bad stuff happens in your lives, it can affect your perspective on God's goodness. But the psalmist says, truly, God is good no matter what is going on in my life. In fact, the goodness is better than life itself. Amen. There's nothing in life so bad that it overwhelms my goodness. His goodness, this is what what you've got to get and what you've got to believe. No matter what you face, no matter what you go through, God is always going to be there to see you through. God is good. He is really good. He is good all the time. Amen. All the time, God is good. If you're going to survive everything life, this life is going to throw at you. You need to lay a foundation on the goodness of God in your heart. Amen. It's like, it's like your dad. All right, your parents. Amen. You know when you messed up, you was going to get corrected. Amen. But it was done out of love. Amen. Sometimes dad will just sit back and say, well, you know what? Let them figure it out. Amen. They got themselves in that situation. They're going to have to learn to work the way out. I'm not always going to be there. Amen. But basically what he was saying, you better trust me. I done put something in you. You better dig into that word. You better get down on those knees. You better get to praying. You better keep thinking, seeking God because that's who's going to see you through to the end. Amen. Amen. He is better than your life. He is better than the best day. He's better than the darkest nights. He's better than life itself. God is good. God is good. All His ways are good. Everything He does is good. In my worst moment, in my darkest valley, when everything is going wrong, God is good. Amen. He is that light in that darkness. Amen. When I'm going through something, He's that light. Amen. I can trust Him. Amen. I believe in Him. Amen. Psalms 31 and 19 says, Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for me, that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Amen. You got to get this word picture. God has laid up goodness. 
He has laid up goodness for them. Now here's the kicker, for them that trust him. Amen. David is, David is saying that God has a warehouse full of goodness that will be delivered to you in the midst of your trouble if you will only believe that God is good and that you will trust him. Amen. Trust him. God is good. you got to believe it. Watch this, Exodus 33, 18 and 19. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he, God, said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee and will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. Moses has asked to see the glory of God. And God says, I will show you my goodness. God's glory is on display in his goodness. This goodness of God is the expression of his glory. Amen. God is good. We got to get that. God is good. Out of his goodness, he is merciful. Amen. Out of, his, out of the depths of his goodness, he is gracious. Because of his goodness, he is long-suffering. He is your provider because he's good. He keeps his promises because he's good. He makes a way when there seems to be no way because he's good. He opens up doors that no one else can open because he's good. Amen. He's an on-time God. He is a provider, a way where he's a mountain mover. Amen. We sung about it. He can move mountains. He can break chains. Amen. He pulls down strongholds. Amen. He's a healer, a provider. Everything that we need, we find in God. Psalms 27 is a psalm of confidence and courage. It starts with the question, whom shall I fear? It ends with the command to wait on the Lord and to be good and to be of good courage. And in the middle of it all, the goodness of the Lord, in Psalm 27, 1 through 3, says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? God is good. You do not have to fear God. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, it is this will I be confident. Verse 13 says, I had fainted unless... I believe to see the goodness of God, of the Lord, in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. My enemies and foes rose up against me. A host encamped against me. War and trouble came upon me. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like the walls and the world were just caving in upon you? Amen. Everything's against me. Why do I have to go through this? Why am I the only one always facing trouble and going through something? There is no evidence around me. Amen. That I've done something wrong. I don't understand why good things, why bad things happen to good people. Of the goodness or, or the blessing of the Lord, David said, I would have fainted. My feet almost slipped. I felt like I was going down for the last time, but then my faith in the goodness of God stepped in. Not my head knowledge. Amen. Because what I see defies what I know. But my faith said, my faith said God is good. Amen. God is good all the time. And all the time God is good. God did not show his goodness by removing David from the trouble. God displayed his goodness in the midst of David's trouble. Amen. Don't wait until he delivers you to praise him for his goodness. Praise Him while you're going through the situation. Amen. He is the deliverer. Amen. It is your faith in His goodness. Amen. That is going to get you through. Don't wait until the evidence supports the conclusion. Make up your mind while you're going through the situation. When everything seems to be going against you, God is good. Amen. I trust Him. He is my chief cornerstone. He is my rock. Amen, my sword, my shield, my buckler. Amen, he's all that I need is in God. It's in Jesus Christ, amen. We serve a mighty God. Psalm 73, 1 and 3 says this. Truly God is good to Israel. This was our opening text. Amen, I'm not going to be long, by the way. Amen, just going to let you know. 
Truly God is good in Israel, even to such as are of the clean heart. Amen. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. Amen. For I was envious. I was envious of the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Amen. Verse 28 says this, but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. All thy works. Truly God is good. Truth is absolute. Truth does not change. Amen. And I'm so thankful for this truth. I'm thankful for the word of God. Amen. I'm thankful for the preached word. I'm thankful to study it. Amen. So before the psalmist recounts his difficulty, he recounts the foundational truth that preserved him when his faith was weak and his confidence was gone. He said, I nearly fell. I was slip sliding away. I was so overwhelmed by my circumstance that it nearly got the best of me. And out of the midst of my despair, all I could see was the prosperity of the evil, of the, evil, of the wicked. Why am I the only one who's got to go through trials? This person's doing, I know this person ain't living right. And look, boy, they just keep prospering. Amen? Out of the midst of my despair, all I could see was the prosperity of the wicked. I am righteous. I'm doing the right things, Lord. I'm of a clean heart. I've repented. Amen? I am numbered with those who fear the Lord. I've got the Holy Ghost. Why am I having such a hard time? Why am I going through this? Amen? Those who defy the law of the Lord. Amen? This is almost all I can bear. And I look around me and those who don't serve God seem to be blessed. Amen? Lord told me when I first came to him. Amen? He took me to Psalm 73. One of the things we get in the biggest trouble is, you said it this morning, you can't compare yourself to anybody else. You can't compare your church to another church. They're grazing on another pastor. Their pastor's not the pastor that we're grazing upon. Amen. They don't have the leadership that you have. God has put you in a church. He has given you a pastor. He has given you this body to support you. Don't compare this church to another church. You'll always see some. The grass always looks greener. Don't compare your walk to somebody else's walk. Amen. You probably couldn't carry their shoes, and they definitely couldn't carry your shoes. Amen. The worst thing we can do is start comparing with this person or that person or this situation, that situation. Don't get caught up in that mess. Amen. Trust in the Lord. Amen. Stay focused. This is where, God, I'm going to blossom where you planted me. I'm going to bloom where you planted me. Amen. I'm going to grow where you put me. I'm going to seek down deep roots because this is where you put me. I can't, get, can't venture off looking at what everybody else is doing. Amen. I can't do that. Amen. It is almost more than I can bear. And I look around me and those who don't even serve God seem to be blessed. Those who divide the law of God seem to be blessed. When I compared my case to theirs, I nearly stumbled and fell. Amen. I seen something, somebody was showing me something at work where this dude was trying to per persuade his church that he needed a $47 million plane. And I was like, what? But what bothered me, he was comparing himself to somebody else in another church. All right. But then when you looked at this dude's face, man, he was evil. I'm like, the same ain't right with this. Amen. I say that, don't, again, don't compare. Don't compare your church. Don't compare your walk. Don't even compare your life. Don't compare your home to anybody else's home. Amen. You control your home, first off. Amen. What you allow in there is what you allow in there. What you don't allow in there is what you don't allow in there. Amen. Hold on to this truth. Amen. He says, when I compared my case to theirs, I nearly stumbled and fell. It was almost more than my soul could bear. I was in trouble, and they were not. 
I was plagued with problems, but they were not. They were wrapped up in pride and vanity. Their hands are guilty of violence. Their hearts are far from God, yet they have more than they could ever wish for. They have the wealth and riches and fine clothes and treasures of life. I love God, but I'm in destitute. I'm broken. I'm empty. They are corrupt. They speak wicked things. They are arrogant in their attitudes. They even curse God and question the very character of, his, of, of their creator. They are the ungodly and look at the evidence. They prosper. They are getting richer by the day. There seems to be no end to their fortune. It was almost too much for, the, for me, the psalmist said. He said, I have cleaned my heart in vain. I have washed my hands for nothing. I'm plagued. I'm rebuked. I have done good, but have found trouble on every side. Think about that for a moment. It wasn't supposed to be this way. This wasn't on the brochure. You told me if I got the Holy Ghost came to church, boy, life would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. This wasn't supposed on the brochure. I'm supposed to be living the blessed life. I'm supposed to be living the faith in the favor of God. Amen. What happened? What went wrong? Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt that way? Amen. It gets hard sometimes living for God. Amen. That's when we lose focus, when we struggle. When you do, you need to do what the psalmist did. He said, I went to the sanctuary of God. Then I understood their end. Amen. I went to church. Then all of a sudden my perspective changed. Amen. I was fixated on material blessings. I was fixated on wealth and privilege. I was concentrating on their standing in this world, but I ignored the standing with God. Amen. Now I see it. Now I have set them on this on the slippery slope. They are headed for destruction. They are put their confidence in their worldly success. They have put their hope in their own riches. They have ignored God and think they have prospered because of it. But you have put them on a path to destruction. When I got eternity in view, amen, when I consider their end compared to mine, amen, everything changed, amen. Listen, it is time that we get eternity in our view, amen. We start understanding we're living for heaven. Amen. Our time here is only temporary. Don't get fixated on this temporal stuff. Because this ain't none of this going with us. Amen. We're going to heaven. Amen. Amen. We're going to heaven. We need to live our life with that in sight. Amen. Oh, Lord, when I get, can't wait to sit at your feet, Lord, to be in your glory. Amen. To be those who are singing around that throne. Amen. Having that crown of life. Everything changed. Amen. Listen, it is time we got eternity in view. It is time we started evaluating life in the light of heaven's reward and not this world's reward. The psalmist said, I was foolish. You never left me, Lord. It was in, I was in your hand all along. The path you put me on will get me to glory. It's a straight and narrow path. It may be hard, but it's the right path. Amen. You were looking out for me. You never abandoned me, Lord. You have never forsaken me. My heart and my flesh may fail but you are my strength Lord I may not have much in this life but you are my portion Lord those that are far from you will perish but I am near you and at the end of the day I will come to you to the conclusion that it is good to be close to God all that matters is relationship with the Lord dying out daily picking up our cross and following Jesus that's all that matters is living by the word of God. Letting trust him and having God carry us through to the end. Amen. To that reward. Amen. I have put my trust in you because you are trustworthy, Lord. Truly God is good. This is the foundational truth that carries you through every trial and every heartache. God is good. Amen. God is good. Amen was listening to somebody the other day talking about, and they was asking why it felt like so much. They like to get away to a cabin. They like to go camping. And the person just simply asked the question, you know, why do you like to go to the cabin for everything? He says, simple. No cell phone, no TV, no outside world. But I have come to the conclusion, 
If you have to ask, you will never understand. Amen. A lot of people ask a lot of questions about why we live for the Lord. We can give them all the answers. Amen. But until they experience, they'll never understand. Because if you got to ask, you'll never understand. Amen. Bart Millard, for mercy me. Amen. Wrote the song, I Can Only Imagine. Amen. Big E, Uncle Alec. Loves that song. Keeps talking about it. I said, man, I got to check this out a little bit. It's a great song, powerful song. But I sat there and I was reading some stuff on him. He says, he says I can count a million times people ask me how I can praise you with all that I have gone through. Amen. If you read his story, he had a very hard upbringing. The question just amazes me. Can circumstances possibly change who I forever am in you? Here's the thing. If you got to ask, you will never understand. Amen? Until you've let your trust, until you believe that God is good, until you come and dine at the master's table, until you've tasted and seen the goodness of God, amen, you'll never understand. Amen? We can explain the Holy Ghost all day, but until you ex experience it for yourself, until you've experienced this separated life for yourself. Amen. You'll never understand it. Amen. I'm going to close. Amen. God is good no matter the situation. No matter the diagnosis, God is good. It doesn't matter what the doctor tells you. Amen. I don't come to the conclusion. To, to get a report or something like that, I think of the words of of. of of Paul, he said, to die is gain. I'm just going to cross the finish line a little bit earlier than somebody else. Amen. That's exciting. Everybody talking about what's going on in the world right now. It's exciting for me. I hope it's exciting for you. Amen. Because we are watching prophecy unfold right before us. Amen. And the trump of God, I believe, is at the lips just ready to be sounded. And what a day that will be. Amen. When the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then that remains shall be called up to meet him in the air. There will the beast forevermore. Amen. What a day that will be. Amen. I'm running this race. I'm encouraging you tonight to run this race with eternity in sight. Because God is good. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. No matter your circumstances, Jesus is, God, is good. In sunshine and rain, he's good. In good times and bad times, he's good. Stand with me. When I'm winning and when I'm losing, God is still good. Amen. The good times, the bad times. When everything goes my way and when everything falls apart, God is good. Amen. This is not just something I know. This is something I believe. Amen. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. God is good. Yes. Truly, God is good. Amen. We need to live with the, with the eternity in sight. Don't compare. Don't get caught up in your situation, in your circumstances, and let it beat you down. Amen. When I came, the psalmist says, when I came to church, when I got into the presence of God, I got an attitude adjustment. I got a whole new perspective because I seen the truth. And it's that truth that will carry me home. Amen. There's a table the Lord has set before us tonight. Amen. I invite you to come and dine at the Master's table. Come taste and see how good God is. Amen. Come taste and see. Come find a spot tonight and pray and cry out to God. Lord, I'm, I'm going through some stuff, Lord, but I, I trust you to carry me through it, Lord. Lord, you are my way. You are my portion. You're everything I need, Lord. Yes, Lord.